Welcome back to the Brush by Brady YouTube channel. This week I'm working on this piece that's behind me. And my only inspiration for this is some colors that I just haven't used in a while. And sometimes that's a fun place to start when I'm feeling like I'm seeing the same colors over and over. And I tend to do that to myself because everybody knows I lean towards the blues and the greens a lot. Um, and so for this one, I want to mix it up and I'm going to go with some shades of pink and purple. And Wiseal Paint has some really fun shades of pink and purple and I'm going to mix them up and match them and try to create a really fun paint finish on this. I think it's going to be really dramatic when I'm done. There's a new transfer that I want to use and I think they're going to pair really well together. So we're going to see how this all comes together with some pinks and purples. Um, let's see, I've got Wiseal Black Cherry out. I've got Raspberry Beret. So just some bright, bright, fun colors. And it's really just me getting to play around on furniture, which is good for the soul. Um, so I'm trying to get out of my, my same rut, the same things that you see me do, and try a little bit different colors and mix it up a little bit. Here's where I started on this piece. It's a pretty modern piece of furniture made by Pulaski, but it's a really well-made set. The top on this one had quite a bit of damage, so I needed to strip it back to the bare wood. I applied some Jasco stripper to the top. I waited about 15 minutes and then came back and removed all that old finish using a scraper. Once I was done with this top, the rest of my prep work included removing all of my hardware, cleaning this piece really well, and a light scuff sanding over the body, and then I applied two coats of Wiseal primer in light gray. And that was where this piece sat for just a little bit in my workspace and waited for me to have time to be able to play around. Once I had my prep all done, I was able to start with some paint on the body of this piece and I didn't really have a clear direction as far as the colors was going, except that I wanted to use those pinks and purples. So I threw up some sample colors in the pink and purple range from the Wiseal paint line and I came up that I definitely wanted to use some black cherry, which is this dark purple color that I'm going to apply around the edges of the piece. Black cherry is one of those funny colors that you don't see the true result of until you apply your second coat. It definitely needs two coats to get the full color saturation. So on this coat, it does end up looking a little bit light around the edges, but on that second coat, it becomes the most gorgeous plum color. On the center right now, you see that blob of pink. That's just where I blended out those sample colors that I put up on the piece because I didn't want to have noticeable paint lines where I had painted those on. The actual color that I'm going to use on the center of this is called Raspberry Beret. Now this was a limited release color, so it can be a little hard to find, so I wanted to give you some alternatives if you're not able to locate this color. Wiseal Paint in Rocksteady is a little more pink, but it would give you this a similar look, or you could mix Rocksteady with a little bit of the Black Cherry and it would give you closer to the Raspberry Beret color. This first coat of Raspberry Beret didn't get quite get all the coverage that I needed, so that's also going to need a second coat as well. Right now I'm just trying to get a coat over the surface of my piece and cover up all that gray primer. So I put that raspberry beret around the center, I outlined it in a coat of that black cherry, and then I'm just gonna use a little bit of black on the very corner edges and that bottom skirting for a little bit of drama. With some of these colors, it's not uncommon to even need a third coat of paint, and raspberry beret is one of those colors that I feel like might sometimes just need an extra coat. With my first coat on and dry, I'm going to come back and repeat the same process for my second coat, only this time I decided to reverse my order and I started with the Raspberry Beret. I applied a little bit of water to the surface using a mister bottle, and then I'm just going to brush on that Raspberry Beret, then I'm going to put that coat of the Black Cherry around the outer edges, and I'm going to work those two colors together. This front is a pretty large flat surface and it can be a challenge to blend on these because you've got to move, move pretty quickly and you need to keep your paint wet while you're still working it. So I keep that mister bottle in my hand, I keep that paint fresh and I'm working pretty quickly. Once I've got those two paint colors on the surface and they're still nice and wet for me keeping them fresh with the mister bottle, I'm going to start working them together. And I did that at first just using my Klingon S50 brush, but I'm going to blend with a block brush on this one. A block brush is a nice, large, flat brush that you can sweep over the top of the furniture piece. Klingon makes a beautiful block brush. The B10 and the B12 have a great size to them, and they're really friendly for blending, especially on large surfaces like this. The Klingon brush does have a removable handle, so you can take that handle off and then sweep it over the top of your piece, but you can also use it with the handle on. 
So I like to do this step only on my second coat of paint. And I found that with my first coat, the block brush tends to take a little bit too much of paint off the surface. But once I've got that base coat underneath and it's nice and dry, I can blend that paint out using the block brush. It does a beautiful job, but just be aware that it does remove a little bit more paint than blending with your Klingon S50 brush. With my paint complete, I'm going to go ahead and let that dry and pull out this transfer from Redesign with Prima. This is from their brand new fall collection and it had just the right colors in it. I didn't intend this piece for this transfer, but when I saw it, I knew it was just right. It had some lettering in the transfer and some extra corner pieces that I don't think I'm going to be using. So I'm going to cut these out and I'm going to save these for a later project. This transfer is called Rustic Charms. It comes in a 24 by 35 inch size and it suited the size of the front of this piece perfectly. Check out my live video also up now on my YouTube channel to see the full fall 2023 release from Redesign with Prima. This transfer includes some really beautiful wine and mulberry colors that are perfect for fall. It's also got some whites and beiges in there that are great neutrals. It has the antler design, so I thought it was a very versatile transfer. This one comes in two pieces. So once I dry fitted the transfer on the front of my piece, I found my placement and I'm gonna apply this bottom section first. I started out by centering this onto the front of my piece. I'm gonna rub it on using the transfer tool that comes in the package with the transfer. I start by rubbing over the entirety of the transfer and then I'm gonna start pulling back on that clear backing sheet as I go. These large transfers can take some time to apply, so you want to allow yourself some time and be patient with yourself. This one took about an hour, hour and a half to apply the two large pieces to the front of this furniture piece. Along with my transfer tool, the other tools that I always have out when I'm applying a transfer are a pair of scissors so that I can cut apart my transfer as needed and a razor knife. And I use the razor knife to slice the transfer and any of those deep 90 degree corners so that I can try to keep it from ripping on its own. And that way I get a nice clean corner on the transfer. I also use that to slice the transfer along any drawer edges and those seams where it meets up. Once I have the bottom piece of this transfer all on, I'm going to rub over it using my fingers and make sure it's nicely seated. And then I'll come over it using the polishing pad from Redesign with Prima. This just removes any air bubbles from the surface and seats that adhesive nicely to the furniture piece. Now I can go ahead and add the top piece to this design. And this has a seam on it that you'll notice weaves in and out of the transfer design versus having a straight line seam. So it makes that seam even harder to find in the design. On this one, I know where that seam is so I can find it, but I would challenge anyone to come up and be able to find the seam between these two transfer pieces. I made sure to take my time finding the seam on this piece to make sure it matched up along the full edge line. And now I'm gonna start rubbing my transfer into place. And this one, I have to go over this drawer crease here. So I'm gonna work my way up and I'm gonna kind of stair step that transfer on, working just one area at a time, and then using my razor knife to slice in between those drawer seams. I just use my fingers to wrap that transfer into any of those creases and the moldings along the edge of this drawer. Once I work one, then I'll work up my, my way up to the next one. Let's throw on some music and finish applying this transfer. With my paint on and dry and I've got that transfer on, let's go ahead and pay attention to that wood stain top. Um, I do need to be very careful while I'm doing this because I never want to get any of this stain onto the finished body of my piece. Remember that's unsealed paint so it would leave a mark of stain. I sanded this top using an 80 grit then a 120 and then a 220 grit sandpaper with my surf prep sander and I got it nice and smooth and ready to accept the stain. This is Minwax Stain and the color is called Dark Walnut and I applied it in the direction of the grain. I did end up applying two coats just using a gloved hand and then an old rag to apply it. This piece has some beautiful details on it and I want to accentuate them using a little bit of gilding wax. Only I'm not going to use gold on this one. I'm actually going to use a rose gold. It's this really soft pink color and it ties in great with the purple and pink tones that I used in my paint color. 
This gilding wax is also available from Redesign with Prima. They've got a whole collection of different colors, and I love how you can tie in the different tones in your paint using some of your waxes as well. This layering process with the paint and the wax and the transfers is how you get these beautiful looks. I applied this soft rose gold wax just using the edge of my finger and I went over the high points of my molding pulling it towards the center as I went to get this sort of faded effect. I added a little bit of black wax for that shading effect around the edges of my paint that I love to do and now this piece is ready for clear coat. I'm going to spray it in two coats of Wiseau matte varnish using my paint sprayer. The matte varnish has this beautiful low sheen that I just love. You can apply it with a brush or a sponge but the sprayer makes quick work of it. And now this piece is complete and I just staged it using some flowers that pulled in some of the tones from my paint colors, a couple of antlers from my yard that were reminiscent of the antlers in the transfer. And this piece delivers a huge wow factor, this color combination especially. You guys can find links for everything I use in the description for this post. You can find more Brush by Brandy on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube, and on my website at brushbybrandy.com. And don't forget to click that subscribe button for weekly painting tutorials here at Brush by Brandy on YouTube. But did you guys also know a lot of my pieces go up for sale, and those can also be found at brushbybrandy.com.